PowerPoint presentation for week six, sectional views. What is a sectional view? Sometimes we have to show or dimension features inside a part. If we have to dimension features inside a part, sometimes the best way to do that is actually cut an imaginary plane through the part, exposing the inside. Because one of the uh, rules for dimensioning is you can't dimension to a hidden line. So you have to make that hidden line visible by opening the part up. So two definitions for sectional views, a method to describe more clearly with fewer views, a complicated part, and we typically do that by revealing internal hidden features. So we have some new uh, line types, uh, cutting plane lines, which is an imaginary line that represents the cutting plane in edge view, uh, sectional or section lines, which are a thin series of parallel lines in our case, that we'll be doing in hand sketching. For CAD software, like NX, AutoCAD, other things like that, typically there is materials. If, you, if you're if you in NX and you say, well, I wanna make this part uh, made out of copper. So you can choose the material you want it made out of. It would then give you the uh, uh, physical characteristics of it. So if you had to do some math functions with density or whatever, it would do it with uh, with copper as a, as a uh, material. Also, it would give you, if you cut a uh, section cut through that material and it was copper, it would have its own uh, line type for copper so of section lines. And it might be dashed lines or zigzag lines or dash and zigzag lines, but each material that you chose would have a different material type as described by different sets of uh, lines. For us, we're just going to use 45 degree angle thin lines that are parallel. And you'll see that in just a few minutes. Break lines are used to cut a part off also. You saw like break lines in the, in the index uh, and in the, uh, the inlet, okay, where the isometric view was broken. We kind of do that in 2D also with orthographic views. Line precedence considerations. And a cutting plane line takes precedence over every other line, object, hidden, center, and it's wider and thicker than an object line. So it really has to show up on your drawing. Some general guidelines for sectional views. The section lined area is always completely bounded by object lines. An object line can never cut across a section lined area. So this is... Uh, they say an object line completely bounds or it's a boundary for a section lined area. Or another way to say it is you can't have an object line cutting through the section lined area. So number three, we do not use hidden lines in a sectional view. By default, NX has the hidden lines either turned on or off and I have them turned on in your template. So anytime you create a sectional view in NX, you will have to manually turn the hidden lines off in that view. Normally section lines run at 45 degrees. More guidelines, do not section fasteners. A fastener is things like nuts and bolts and screws and rivets and whatever uses to fasten things together because not only can we do a sectional view uh, of a part, we can also do a sectional view of a series of parts like stacked together. Uh, in which case, you know, a fastener would like bolt two pieces of metal together or, or something like that. Uh, we do not section the fasteners. We typically cut through the hole and cut through the fastener with our cutting plane line. But usually the fastener is very small in relation to the size of the things it's holding together. And there's usually not room to put section lines in a fastener. So we just don't do that. There are special considerations for ribs and or webs. Uh, ribs and webs, think of a body, ribs are on the inside, webs are on the outside, like between the toes of a duck, okay? Uh, ribs are on the inside. So ribs and webs are thin structural members that we, when we cut through it with a, with a sectional cutting plane line, uh, we don't usually show the ribs and webs cut the same way or section the same way. Make sure in your reading assignment you find where it says ribs and webs and you see examples of that. That's important. Number three, sectional view is placed behind the cutting plane line. Let's go to this one. Here's an example. Here's the cutting plane line DD and CC. This is behind CC. Okay, this is behind the line. Or in other words, in other words 
The arrows are pointing in the direction of view. So just remember that the arrowhead is pointing in the direction of view and that the arrows point away from the section view. So that's number three. Section view is placed before, behind the cutting plane line. Visible features beyond the cutting plane line are normally shown except in revolved and removed sections. So if we had a cylinder sticking up right here, if we had a cylinder right there sticking up, it would be shown in both of these views, okay, because it's, it's on this side of the cutting plane line. If we had something sitting on this plane here, we would see it in the front view, but we would not see it in the section view because it's behind our cutting plane. Okay, next slide. There are nine types of sectional views. These are the conventional names for section views. You may find these functions in CAD programs like NX, but they may be named something different. Like an NX, a full section, and an offset section can both be used with the section command. Uh, an NX and a line section is actually called a revolved section, which just confuses things because there is a revolve section. But these are the nine types of sectional views, of which examples are giving this point note. So this is a full section. Pause the video, read the description of it. Okay, you should be able to recognize a section view by this description on the right hand side. Uh, I'm going to quickly pass through this. This was just showing a different program called Solid Edge that also did section views and didn't always do things correctly. Uh, realize that CAD programs are not sometimes set up or the defaults aren't set correctly. When we used Solid Edge in Mech 100 years ago, by default the, the section lines weren't phantom line types. It should be uh, long dash, two short dashes, and then repeat long, two short, and it just has used center lines by default. So you gotta be careful when things are preset for you in programs that they're not always set right. That's why we use, make sure you use the template I gave you because otherwise you'll get you know errors in the templates that uh, NX has pre-made. They're not fully functioning, okay? This also did not have center lines through the holes. A half section is similar to a full section, except it's cutting a quarter out here. So it's not called a quarter section. It's called a half section because the sectional view looks like there's two halves. Okay. Sometimes I wanted to show the outside of a feature and the inside of a feature so that they do a, a half section. This was done typically with a symmetrical object, cylindrical objects. So that's when a half section would be used. Uh, example of solid edge using a half section. I won't belabor the point because we're not using solid edge, but it it manipulated things a little bit different. And the arrowheads were so tiny, I didn't know how to turn those on back then. Um, uh, they were on, they were just so small you couldn't see the arrowhead. Uh, but solid edge had some problems with uh, creating conventional section views. This is an offset section. This is what I call a composite full section. It's a composite of two different full sections. One full section might cut through this feature, one through the circular hole, okay? Combine them by bending or offsetting the cutting plane and you get here one composite of two different uh, full sections. Notice there's not a line where this offset is. When we cut this, this is called an imaginary cutting plane line which means it does not actually cut the part, it does not actually create a new feature inside, therefore we do not show the feature. By the way, this is one of your problems, your homework problems. Uh, solid Edge didn't quite do the same thing. Uh, when it offset a cutting plane line, it actually created or broke the rule by creating new edges inside. This is an aligned section. This is where we get a little funky. It's kind of like a, something between a full section and, uh, and an offset section. With an aligned section, you have one normal leg that's either vertical or horizontal. Then you have one leg that's on an angle. The cutting plane line that's on an angle goes through some feature, in this case, this slot here on the side. That's what's important to what's on this, this leg here. So what we, how we get this over here with this uh, opening, this little cutaway, is up here at the very top as well as the one in the very bottom. 
so it doesn't quite look like you'd see. If you were looking from the right-hand side of the front view, you'd see this feature right here, okay? But we show it at the top and bottom as if this feature and this, as if you took this leg, revolved it 45 degrees until it was aligned with the bottom leg and moved whatever was on, whatever feature was on this cutting plane line, revolved it with it so it, as if it was up here and then we reflect it across or project it across to here. So that's how an aligned section. Look in your book, look in the example problems of your book. So what we're seeing here with, a, with an aligned section, and typically it's just called a, a section BB, not aligned, but just section BB. It looks like, remember, the definition of an orthographic view is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object. We are representing it. This is a different perspective of the part. So it looks kind of like it's been rolled out or flattened, okay? But the reason they do this is because you could dimension from the center of this hole uh, out the, the radius to this radius here, this distance out here, and it's the same distance across to here, so it's the same distance from center to that feature and the center to this feature in this view. That's an aligned section. Solid Edge had a problem with this, okay? It, it actually, when it cut a cutting plane through, it did it virtually as the eye would see it, and it left you with a mess up top. A broken out section. A broken out section was used from a hand draftsman's point of view. When he didn't have maybe room for a full view of the part, uh, an orthographic view, and a section view, he only had room for one of those on a drawing sheet, he would maybe make a composite of them. So he would draw a break line through the part, which is a zigzaggy or wavy line. This line should be thicker than an object line. And he would give you both your broken out view and your regular view all in one view. So that was called a broken out view. Back in the old days, time, you know, time was money. And it took a, a hand draftsman a long time to draw some complicated drawing, like, you know, a cut through an engine block or something. So if he could shorten his time by his hand drawing, uh, he would do so. Nowadays with CAD, once we model a part, we can just go whoosh, cut through it and we have a section view instantly. So we're not limited by time so much as the hand draftsman was. So broken out sections, are they used anymore? They really don't need to be if you're, if you're creating a solid model of the part with NX, something like an NX, and then creating a section view from it. We can create a, uh, a front view and a section view almost instantaneously. So we don't have to create broken out views, but they're still used in some way. Uh, this is a removed section by cutting plane, and it looks very similar to a, to a full section where you'd cut through the part except instead of seeing the background noise of the part from here back to the left, um, you know, all this junk around here, we don't see it. We would just see a cutting, uh, removed section by cutting plane method is a full section, but only showing the plane that we cut through, not all the background noise. So it's kind of simplified. Again, you can do this with NX as I did. I just created a full section and then I hide, uh, I went in there and clicked on the line and, and hid them all that I didn't want. Another example, uh, remove section by center line method, where the center line is acting as the cutting plane. You draw a center line through, and this would be hand drawn on NX, and then you create your full section and uh, hide all the lines in it. But this would be done in hand drawing fashion in the old days. Uh, just like this is depicted on NX. So I can do this with NX, but probably you just create another sheet and throw your section views in. You wouldn't have to do this. Uh, this is another hand sketching, hand draftsman way of solving a problem when he was limited by time or more likely space. When he would say, I don't have room to put a section view in and I don't want to create a whole other sheet of paper to do that. So he actually would use a cutting plane method to put a center line through the part, and that would represent the cutting plane. He would then revolve that feature on the cutting plane 90 degrees, superimpose it on the view, 
and that's the cut through through here right now he would usually delete the object lines going in through here I had no way of doing that with NX and sometimes he'd break the line before it hit the section view also so he'd break it out around it it's pretty messy but again hand draftsman came up with solutions with the tools he had we don't really do this in with any CAD program Conventional round break. It was conventional to create a, a series of arcs that kind of look like the S, you know, kind of thing here. Conventional round break. Whenever you broke a cylindrical part, like a, a pipe or a, or a solid shaft or something, if you couldn't show the whole cylinder on the sheet of paper at that scale, you'd maybe break it and then, and then squeeze the ends inward like I did here. You know, maybe it was that long and you went in to here this long. Put the conventional round breaks, that meant that you couldn't literally dimension from left to right. It wouldn't be the right dimension, you know. So, and sometimes they would actually remove one side or the other, left or right side, just to show that the part was rounded. If you had room to show section views and section lines in here, you could do that. Otherwise, you didn't have to worry about it. Uh, here's sectioning rules for going through when you're doing your hand sketches. I'll let you read through it. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. And that's it for the uh, PowerPoint notes for sectioning on week six.